So here's a question I've been asked. Hey man, how the hell do you find these 12% funds that you keep talking about are easily obtainable whenever you talk about a Roth or investing with Young, et cetera, et cetera? And it's a, it's a good question. Honestly, it's a question I don't get asked often enough because clearly not enough people are investing. But to get to the nitty gritty of it, when you first set up your investment account or your 401k, whatever the case may be, there are ways to filter and choose between each of the funds. And one of the first things you should filter for is you should filter based on the rate of return that you want to get on your funds. Clearly, the higher the rate of return that you get on your funds, the more money you, you will have in the long run. The faster your money will double and the better your investments will do right so there's there's options i was just looking and we we invest through three different companies we invest through schwab fidelity and ameriprise each one has their own little system each one has its quirks and pros and cons um but on on all of them you could filter by a rate of return you could get less than 10 percent greater than 10 percent usually it's 10 to 15 something like that then there's a 15 to 25 and then there's a 25 to 50 and greater than 50. Um, so that's the first place that we use to start narrowing down our investment choices the second thing that we do uh, it usually shows a default of one year um, as a period for that rate of return and we tend to uh, drop that period, increase the period rather, to 10 years. We change the filtering so that we look at 10-year rate of return and filter by rate of return there again. So we want to know that the fund has been around for longer than 10 years or at least 10 years. you got to be careful with some of those funds that have only been around for 7 years because it will give you a 10-year rate of return average but the fund itself won't have actually existed for 10 years. Which brings us to the third point. We filter by inception date. I want to make sure, double check, and make sure that my fund has been around for longer than 10 years. And I want to see how that fund has done since its inception. The higher the rate of return since inception, the better the fund, the more I like it. Okay? Uh, an inception date is when the fund got started. Uh, just in case you're you're wondering about that or we're unclear on that. Now beyond that, we then tend to look at Morningstar ratings. I want a Morningstar rating of a four or a five on any accounts that I invest in. And then I check to see if the fund itself is open to new investors. When uh, sometimes a fund will not be open to new investors, you'll you'll we go through, we clear it all down, everything looks good, and oh, you can't invest in it, it's closed. So once you've figured out whether it's closed or open, you want to filter to see what the initial investment amount is. Most people will be looking for something with a low initial investment amount. Uh, typically zero to a hundred dollars if you're trying to invest on a monthly basis and dollar cost average. If you have more significant funds that you've been saving up elsewhere and are looking to put into the market, well, then you'll be able to invest in funds that require a $1,000 initial investment or $3,000 initial investment. Uh, but for the most part, most of the people that I'm trying to reach will be in the zero to $100 category unless they took my advice and saved up while they were young and are now dumping in six grand at the age of 18 into their Roth, which I hope is some of you guys. Now, after that, you could filter by other things. You can filter based on uh, whether or not the companies invest, uh, the fund is based on American companies. You can filter based on whether or not the funds are uh, investing in uh, companies with green initiatives or that you know, pursue whatever social uh, issue that you like, uh, and so on. Now, the one thing that you want to know is that you can let your funds 
accumulate in a cash account with your investment house until you reach a certain investment level. Say you've done the filtering and you really like a fund that requires a hundred dollar initial or I'm sorry a thousand dollar or three thousand dollar initial investment. Well you can let those funds accumulate in a cash account until they've reached that mark. As long as you think that's going to happen relatively quickly and quickly in investment terms would be in a year or less. Uh, you can also invest in something else and then transfer or do a trade within your funds, liquidate all of this investment and invest in this better investment. Uh, but that's something you'll have to research, dedicate some time and effort to make sure that you understand how trades take place within your investment account. But guys, that is it. There's a lot more to it. I know it looks complicated and intimidating. I've talked about this in one of my earlier videos, but it took me forever to get to the point, the meat and potatoes in that video. So I thought that I would re-record and re-share this information. If you've got questions about how to filter your funds, where to get started, how to get things started, whatever the case may be, I'd love to help you with that. You can reach out to me here on Xbox or Twitch. You can send me an email at fustyandfinance at gmail.com. Or, as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a uh, question in the comments below. Most important thing that you could do, if you already know all this information, is share it with somebody else. Please, copy the link, text it to somebody that you know. Maybe they'll want to be starting their investments, too.